welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy and I feel like crap. Feeling pretty crummy today. I have a sore throat. Doing my best to use my voice. Drinking some tea and uh, yeah. I just returned from holidays and I said that when I get back, I'ma do a living room plant tour. I'm a woman of my word. So here we go. I have like, I don't know, 20 plants or something. I don't like to keep count too strictly because then I have to admit that I'm a crazy plant person. Um, and I'm not a big fan of math. I'm just going to show you my plants. We won't keep count. Here we go. These are my staghorn ferns. Pretty neat plants. They're epiphytes. They normally grow on the sides of trees in the forest. So I've mounted them on blocks of wood using uh, sphagnum moss and fishing line. And they're really easy to take care of. A lot of people have the impression that they are difficult to take care of. Not true at all. Very easy to take care of. Basically, I just wait until the sphagnum moss dries out. Then I take it off the wall, put it in the tub, give it a little shower, let it drip dry, put it back on the wall. Done. Some people are like, I don't get it. That looks like somebody ripped up a bunch of craft ribbon and left it behind Michael's in the garbage bin and then somebody dug it out and put it on the, the wall. But I rather like them. It's an unconventional beauty like myself. And I, I find them rather interesting. I think they're... This is my Calathea medallion. It's a beautiful plant. It's really, really large. It's spectacular. And the leaves are huge! I mean, look at this. Like, I have big hands for a lady. Those are some big leaves. And it's in bloom. Neato! It's a really bizarre looking flower. But I am excited about it, nonetheless. It's really neat. I didn't even consider that Calathea would bloom. And then one day this thing popped up and I was like, what is that? And it turned out to be a flower. So during the day, the leaves are like this and you get to, you know, admire how pretty they are. And like prayer plants in the evening, the leaves all turn up. And on the underside, they're gorgeous purple. So all day long, you get to see this. And in the evening, all the leaves turn up and it's a really pretty purple plant. This is my little workspace where I write blog articles and, and work at my real job. <laughs> I have a fiddly fig back in this corner. Seems pretty happy back here. Keeps me motivated. It's a really nice looking plant. I didn't like them at first, but then I saw them for realsies at the garden center. I thought, oh, that, that, that's a pretty cool plant. I'd like to have a tree in my house. People said they're finicky. I don't really agree. As long as you don't touch it too much, it's fine. Sometimes I dust the leaves with a wet microfiber uh, rag, but otherwise, no touchy. I have another staghorn fern back here, so you can kind of see it up close, I guess. See, there's like sphagnum moss. Oh, it's still pretty damp. And the leaves are pretty neat. They're kind of fuzzy. And then I have my begonia here. I already showed you my begonia, but why don't I show you again? I moved it out here to the table where I spend most of my day working because I love this plant. I have a big old Calathea mosaica network. Now that is a really neat plant. It's so neato. I love the leaves. They're really cool. They look like, I don't know, dichroic glass or something. Really, really cool looking plant. I had never seen one in real life. I just ordered it online and it arrived and I was like, oh my god. And I've been like that pretty much ever since. I call it Teddy Bear's Appetitus because my cat's name is Teddy Bear and he really loves to eat the hell out of this plant. You can see he's just torn it to bits and I hate it and I've done everything I can to stop him but what he, he just waits for me to go to bed and then he comes out here and he starts eating it and eating it and then I wake up and I find out that it's missing more leaves and there's just nothing I can do because I can't catch him in the act oh he's such a jerk I forgot that I have some terrariums <laughs> some little, little terrariums it's really hard though to see inside Let's just open it and whatnot. 
So you can see I have like a nerve plant in there and Anubius Nana, I think that's what it's called. That sounds like a video game character, like a video game planet or something. Um, that's been doing well. I, I'm, I started this like a year ago, a little less than a year ago, and the moss has kind of like grown wild and the nerve plant is doing really well. I'm terrible at camera work, I'm so sorry. This one, it also has a nerve plant in it, but it's always clouded up so you can't really see anything. And I got this the day that I got back from holidays because, you know, I just had not yet spent enough money. I came home and immediately marched down to the garden center to see what they had. And I found these rhizominous begonias, which I've, I've never had begonias of this type, so I was very excited about that. I'm very excited about the bell jar, because for some reason I just really like bell jars. I don't know what my deal is. So these are cute! I'm happy about that. And out on my balcony I have some jasmine. It's not in bloom anymore. It was when I brought it home. And it smells so wonderful when it's in bloom. It makes the entire apartment smell like jasmine. It's a gorgeous plant and it's just unstoppable. When I came home from holidays, I saw that it had an aphid infestation. And I've been battling aphids for a while. I just can't get it to zoom on that. Forget it. Uh, I had been battling aphids for a while on my clematis plant, which I'm quite ashamed of, and I'm about to show it to you, and I'm so sorry. <sighs> Look at it. I'm so ashamed. Oh, this is... It, it had an infestation of some kind, and it, this, is, this is the first time I ever have outdoor plants. I didn't really notice at first, and then it just kind of got out of hand. And then I tried, Danielle Tells said that she uses rubbing alcohol in water and dish soap mixed together, and I tried that, but it didn't do anything. I had some amazing blooms, but I don't think this thing is going to make it. So when I came home from holidays, I went and bought insecticide, because I finally couldn't take it anymore, and I sprayed it, and I'm hoping that finally takes care of it, but since it's, it's like the end of the season, I don't think she's going to make it. I've shown my crassula in another video. Five things people do wrong when they're taking care of plants. Uh, see, if, maybe you've seen it. It's a cute little thing. And this has nothing to do with my living room or balcony plants, but my new subscriber, Grado, wanted an update on my Hoya Carnosa Compacta which I saved from the brink of death. I made a little video about it if you want to see that little video. They're doing okay. This one a little less so. <laughs> this one has lost some leaves and you can see it's pretty shriveled up. But the, the foliage at the base is doing okay and the vine itself um, doesn't look terrible. This one's obviously doing better. It has some new growth, in fact. I hope that the camera is focusing on this and not on me. It has some new growth, it's doing good, well, it's doing well, and yeah, I, I'm just, I, I read that they like to be a bit on the dry side, so I'm letting them dry out a bit, and we'll see how it goes. There you have it. There's my little living room and balcony plant tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments or anything, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And now I'm going to go lay down, take some time and all. Drink some tea, take care of myself. Thank you so much for watching. If, if you want to see more plant videos in the future, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you later. Have a good day.